hello. This video that I'm filming on August 22nd is going to post on October 14th, which is Robbie's birthday. <clears throat> this is one of the pictures I got off of the website where he's in training currently. By the time this video posts, he will have graduated basic, but he won't be here with me on his birthday because right after basic, he has to go to AIT, which I believe is on the same base, but I'm not entirely certain on that. I don't think we find that out for sure until he graduates, but I don't know. I hope it's on the same base because it'll make it easier for me to get to his graduation from AIT. But then again, maybe it'll be better if it's on a different base. I don't know. Because then it's a different place to travel to. If I get to travel to that one. I don't know. <clears throat> anyway, so I want to make a video all about Robbie. And all about the wonderful boy that he is. Well, he's a man now. I've raised a whole man. A couple of them, actually. <laughs> but, because uh, Robbie is my second born. Um, but my third child, because I adopted my niece, who's um, three months older than he is. Um... So when I was pregnant with Robbie, uh, Dylan was a baby and, um, I had a lot of trouble in pregnancy. Uh, I, I, I know I said in my video about Corbin that I breastfed all the way through my pregnancies. I did not breastfeed all the way through my pregnancy with Robbie because I was having trouble. I was having early labor. Um, so I only breastfed Dylan about halfway through that. And then he actually started nursing again with Robbie. So I was breastfeeding both of them together after Robbie was born because Dylan was only 16 months when Robbie was born. So when I was pregnant with him at 18 weeks, I had a bladder infection and I went into the doctor and they missed it. They said, oh, your uterus is just irritated. You'll be fine. Bladder infection migrated to my uterus, caused my water to start leaking. That was really bad. I almost lost him. It was terrifying. I remember being in the hospital and just crying my eyes out because my water was leaking at just 18, 19 weeks pregnancy. And I'm like, I'm gonna lose my baby. And there was a Bible in the, in the, on the stand in the corner. I picked it up and I just let it drop open and it dropped open to a verse in Deuteronomy. Um, and it said, I, the Lord, go before you, and I will fight your battles for you. You only need be still. I took that as a sign that my baby was going to be okay. So I said, okay, God, I'm trusting in you. Save my baby. Um, my waters sealed themselves over again, and I was allowed to go home. Um, and then a couple weeks later, it happened again. And it kept happening throughout pregnancy. My waters would spring a leak. I'd be in the hospital. I'd be in bed rest. They were telling me, you're going to lose your baby. And I'd pray and I'd say, God, you promised me that my baby is going to be okay, that you would fight your, his battles for him, that he's going to be okay. And things would get better. I'd go home again. I was on and off bed rest the whole pregnancy. My husband was working midnights at the time. And so he would sleep all day and I was taking care of my my baby and pregnant and um I remember my husband's grandmother came over and just yelled at him and for some reason I got mad at her for it she was right she was telling him you know you need to take better care of her but I got mad at her because I was like you're not going to disrespect my husband whatever but Anyway, I was so worried that I was going to lose him. I was so scared. I quit my job um, because I was working part-time at the time, um, working at Pomida. I quit my job because I was like, I need to protect this baby. And I spent so much time in prayer and just trying to have a healthy pregnancy. Um, when we got to 36 weeks, my water was leaking again, and they decided, okay, now, you know, you've been, I had, I had preterm labor from 18 weeks on. They kept stopping it. They kept giving me medications to stop the labor. Um, they gave me the steroid shots to make his lungs grow faster. 
sometimes I wonder if that contributed to him having ADHD, but um, it kept him alive. And so at 36 weeks, uh, they, they said, okay, well, you've been in preterm labor for months. Your water is leaking. We're gonna let you have the baby. And um, he'll just be slightly premature. And um, then the contractions stopped. But my water was leaking, so they induced me. Um, I didn't even push, you guys. Okay, I, I had an epidural with him. I had an epidural with Dylan, Robbie. I had it turned most of the way down with Robbie and Ronan. And then I also had an epidural with Corbin and the twins. Um, the twins, I didn't want an epidural, but they said, the doctor was like, mm, yeah, there's two of them. So there's a risk that we might have to cut you open and we're either gonna have to knock you out or you have to have an epidural beforehand. Or we're gonna have to, go up inside and get the other baby. So I was like, yeah, epidural. Anyway, so I had the epidural, but I had it turned way down um, wow. so I could still feel things. Yes, dear, you need something? Um, you know what, in a little bit, okay? Anyway, so um, I was like, baby's coming. And they're like, nah, 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 nah. We just checked you, you're only at seven. And I'm like, no, baby's coming. Anyway, they still, like, because, you know, they like to take the bed apart when you push. Well, the bed was still in one piece. And I'm like, no, baby's coming. And they lift up the sheet, and he was halfway out. I didn't even push, guys. He's just like, mm, I'm out of here. This kid kept me on my toes. Oh, my goodness. So he was premature, but he was big enough to go home. He was almost seven pounds and he was long. He was my longest baby. He had big feet too. Um, his feet were so big that when they did the footprints, his toes and his heels were like in the words on both sides. He had big feet. And he had a huge soft spot on his head and it scared the heck out of me. Um, Cause it was, it was like so big. It was like his whole head and so, yes, dear? Are you going to have you take me somewhere? Yes. We'll go for a picnic when I'm done with this video. Yeah, let's, let's go bring everyone. Yeah, we'll bring everyone. Go tell them. Anyway, so um, I would nurse him, but he would get tired out. So I also used a little cup. Squeeze the milk out in a little cup and, and, and supplement him that way. And um, <laughs> I would play World of Warcraft when I was up with him because... He was so tiny and I was scared to try to sleep while nursing him until he was a little bit older. So I would sit up and play World of Warcraft with one hand while nursing him. In we're, fact, we're doing a picnic. Yeah, we'll do a picnic. Yay! Um, in fact, his first words were because of that game. One day he was sitting in his little exerciser next to me while I was playing because Rob and I used to play World of Warcraft all the time. We had no money for any sort of entertainment, so we didn't have cable, we didn't have satellite, we didn't have, Netflix wasn't a thing yet. You know, we didn't have any of that, and YouTube had just barely started, so, you know, so we played World of Warcraft, that's what we did, for fun. And so the boys were playing, Robbie was in his little extra saucer, and all of a sudden he looks up at me and he goes, I got no mana! That was his first words. I'm not kidding. He used to play that game with us too when he got a little bit older. Uh, I don't play the game anymore. I just don't have time for it. Um, but every once in a while before he left for the army, we would get a subscription and play for a few weeks. Uh, he, oh, he was my whirlwind. Even though he was premature, he was sitting up by four months. And as soon as he could pull himself up into standing, he tried to walk. He would get his little, little baby body up against the couch, flip himself around and launch. And the first couple of times he did it, he just fell right on his face and he bounced. And he didn't even cry. He'd just get up and do it again. This kid, he was energy. Oh my goodness. Nothing could hold him back. Um, and 
Dylan was my shy baby that didn't take risks and Robert was my troublemaker and he would get Dylan and Ronan to do things that they wouldn't have done by themselves. But this kid, oh my goodness, he stopped taking naps at six months. I couldn't get him to sleep. I could, I could nurse him to sleep. As soon as I would move even a little bit, he was up and he would play, 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 play and like all the energy until he would just crash. Like one time I remember he was sitting in between me and Rob and we were on our bed and Robbie's playing in between us and we were both just exhausted and then Robbie looks up at me, smiles, and he was out. Um, by nine months, he would not stay in a crib. That kid was the only baby I've ever known that had a six pack of abs. He grabbed the bar. Your finger hurts? His finger hurts. Aw, let me see. Mwah. Kinda hurts too. I'm sorry. Can I use a bandage? Yeah, you can have a bandage. Anyway, um, he would grab the crib bar and flip himself out one handed. And if I catch him, he would look at me, flip himself right back in and act like he hadn't done it. He was the kid that I had to take with me to the bathroom. Otherwise, if I had my eyes off of him for like two seconds, he was climbing up the fridge. He would, he figured out how to like get along the door frames and shimmy up the wall. He bit through his tongue like four times because he would climb on stuff, stick his tongue out, and jump off. Kid never broke a bone though. I don't know how. He never broke a bone. Kid was like, he was like indestructible. And oh my gosh, so much energy. Right from the jump, I started working out with him because that was like one of the ways I would challenge, channel his energy. He loved those things that you put in the doorway and they bounce and he would bounce and bounce and bounce and bounce and bounce and bounce all day long. He would start to fall asleep in it and he'd be like, uh, bounce, 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 bounce. Um, so when I had to do something where he had to be contained, I would put him in that. And we had a different house at the time. So it was like the doorway was like right in my kitchen, close to where I was like cooking and stuff. So anytime I was cooking something, he was in the jumper. And I would sing a little song and I'd sing, I called him my pancake and I was like, pancake for you, pancake for me. And I always made up songs for my kids, just silly little songs and that was his. And I don't really know how that got started, but I still call him pancake sometimes. Um, when he was older, we started the superhero books that came about because of a dream that he had where he was a superhero fighting with a girl named Ella DeFro. And, um, so like our entire like book universe came from him. It started from him and I wrote down his dream, turned it into a book and we just kept going from there. I had already written like four books before then and, um, but they were, they were different. They were more geared towards like learning and teaching, like especially like Bible stuff. And, but after that one a lot of my books became fantasy and you know the kids would be involved with coming up with some of the stories and like oh let's write a book about this let's write a book about that and he wanted to be a superhero and his superpower that he picked was shooting lava pancakes from his butt so he was the pancakeinator oh my goodness i always knew he'd go into the army i tried to talk him out of it from the time he was five he was like, I'm gonna be, I'm gonna go in the army. I'm gonna be a real life superhero. When he was, when he signed up for the army, I was like, dang it, I knew it. I knew it, cause you know what? It's, I'm so proud of him and it makes perfect sense. You know, I keep getting these emails and stuff from the um, sandbox app telling me like what he's doing this week. Or, and and uh, last week it was, he was repelling down a 40 foot wall. That is something he'd absolutely love. And when I got to talk to him about it, I was like, so you got to repel down a 40 foot wall? He was, yeah, it was the best. And this kid could not be contained. He was the kid that, you know those, those like backpack things that have like leashes on them? I had to have one on him all the time until he was about six, because as soon as the door was open, he would dart off and he was running. Um, <laughs> when, he, when he hit his teenage years, he got really depressed and he stopped being active and he gained a bunch of weight and I was so worried about him. 
And then he started working out again and got really buff. And I was struggling physically to get my body back in shape after having the twins. I was like, train me, teach me. So he taught me because I taught him, I taught him how to, how to work out and stuff. But because I have Ehlers-Danlos syndrome, um, my body is hyper flexible in places it shouldn't be. And I was always like, I didn't know that that was the wrong way to move your body until it started hurting me because it, it didn't hurt when I was young. I was just like, Oh, look at me. I'm super flexible. And so I had to learn how to move my body correctly. And he did all this research. He was always like really interested in, ana in anatomy. And because I homeschooled him, we focused a lot on what he wanted to learn. And so he started learning anatomy. He's like, mom, you shouldn't be moving your body that way. And so he taught me how to strengthen my core and stop over flexing. And so then I was able to get stronger. And let me tell you what, one of the things that's hard about him being gone is he was my workout buddy his whole life. And now he's not here. So it's harder. Um, oh, he's such a kind and helpful young man. He's so sweet. He's always been really good with his siblings. He and he was really, really close with Tilk. It was funny because when he was four years old, he was like, why can't I be Tilk's daddy? And I'm like, because you're his brother. You're four. And he's like, but I like Tilk. <laughs> he's mine now. In fact, part of him going into the army was that he had planned on becoming Tilk's guardian when Tilk was older like over 18, um, he wanted to be Tilk's guardian so that Tilk would always get the best care possible through like the military and stuff because if he was Robbie's dependent, then he would get Robbie's health care and the best like care homes that the U.S. can offer. And he wanted to do that for Tilk, but he also told me right before he left, he's like, Mom, I don't think Tilka's going to live much longer. I think he's going to die when I'm in basic. And he did. A week later, a week after Robbie left. One of the hardest things about going through all of this is knowing that Robbie's going through it alone without his family. He has his, his military friends and his battle buddies, and it's keeping him busy, and they have therapy there, and he's doing well. But it's hard not having him here for this. Um, having to adjust to Robbie being gone and then Tilk passing away all in the space of two weeks. That's rough. But anyway, back to Robbie and how awesome he is. Look at that handsome boy. He looks Mom. sad in this picture, but he said he was just tired. Mom, do we want... Mom, Naomi really wants to wear her underskirt, but one of them are lost. Okay. The gray one. Well, keep looking. But there's only one. Yep. Naomi's wearing my pink suit. Okay, great. Because I get one. You guys getting ready? Do We're going to go for a picnic. Theo's shoes are super tight for Naomi. How is this watch make for it? Theo's shoes Wait. are the same size as Ellie's. Okay, that's fine. Go get ready for a picnic. Okay. Mom, we're already ready. Okay. I guess this is the end of the video. Um, the day that this posts, Robbie will be turning 19. He will be a fully fledged soldier. Uh, I won't get to spend his birthday with him, unfortunately. I won't get to make the jiggly cheesecake that he loves. That's another thing. He always wanted to challenge me. Every year on his birthday, he would come up with the craziest thing that he wanted me to make. and. <laughs> Most of the time it was beyond my skill level, but I did my best to do it. One time he wanted a train cake. He wanted it shaped like a train. It was a disaster, but he loved it. And then I, th I think it was probably like eight years ago. He's like, I want this Japanese jiggly cheesecake thing. So I'm like, okay. So I learned how to make that. And then he's like, I want this every year on my birthday. It takes like four hours to make it, you guys. And if you're not like super precise, it just totally gets ruined. Like one year it was just scrambled eggs. Um, I made it be I made it for him before he left for the army. 
and he's like mom why'd you make it it's not my birthday i'm like yeah but you're not gonna be home on your birthday so and he's like oh my gosh you're the best and he said that it was the best version of it that i've ever made he's like you're getting really good at this and i wish i could make it for him for on his birthday but i can't and the other kids don't like the cake because it does taste like sweet scrambled eggs it's really jiggly the texture is really fun but it it tastes like sweet scrambled eggs and if you don't do it right then it's just like just scrambled eggs but anyway thank you for watching thank you for letting me brag about my kid i hope he sees this i hope he has a really awesome birthday love you robbie see you soon